Florida's freshwater wetlands are an incredibly biodiverse system, positively brimming with wildlife. And in this episode of The Wild Report, we are exploring Central Florida on the hunt for an endangered bird of prey. But of course, wandering around in a wetland, we were bound to find some of our scaly friends. This little guy, we're gonna move him off the road, is a little baby eastern ribbon snake. And ribbon snakes, they're related to garters, and they're very commonly confused because they're actually in the same genus. They share lots of characteristics, but ribbons, they have one white dot in front of their eyes, so you can use that to tell the difference. And oftentimes, ribbons do not have that kind of checkerboard patterning that we see on garter snakes. Both of these species are considered semi-aquatic snakes, but ribbons even more so. Also, in their body shape, they are typically way more elongate. That kind of ribbon-like body plan is also what gives them their common name, the ribbon snake. Now, out here in these ecosystems, they are predators, but mostly of very small fishes and amphibians, even insects, and they are prey for many, many higher-level consumers. So, we'll help this little guy cross the trail in the direction he is headed, and we'll go see if we can't find any more snakes. But what an amazing find this is. All right, this is technically Allie's life or ribbon snake, so she <laughs> is going to release him into the grass. Alrighty, bye-bye. Aw, look at him go. As we continued birding, we spotted something almost as cute as the ribbon snake, a tiny baby killdeer and its mom. Look at them bouncing at each other. Oh. <laughs> These shorebirds can be found thousands of miles from the nearest coastline and are a ground nesting species whose young literally look like cotton balls with legs. These babies are precocial, meaning they can walk, see, and forage as soon as they hatch. We still weren't having any luck spotting our target bird for the trip. However, we managed to track down another familiar face slithering across the path. All right, check this out, guys. Look at this absolutely beautiful snake right here. This is an eastern rat snake, and specifically, this is the yellow rat snake color morph. Now, eastern rat snakes, throughout their geographic range, exhibit an extremely wide variety of different colors. You can get everything from yellow to green to gray to black, depending on the specific population that you're looking at. All of the rat snakes, no matter what color they are, they are all harmless, non-venomous constrictors. And as you might know from their name, they are primarily feeding on rodents. So they're very active predators. They will feed night and day, although primarily during the day. They are also some of the largest non-venomous snakes here in the state of Florida, sometimes reaching lengths of six to eight feet when they are fully grown, which is really impressive. This one is definitely considered a fully grown adult, but not at maximum size for the species. And as a pretty large non-venomous snake, they are a very important part of our ecosystems here. They are keeping populations of prey items, especially those rodents in check, but also providing food for those really high level consumers. And as you can see, no reason to be scared of these beautiful snakes. So we'll go ahead and sit them down and let them go about his day. So. <laughs> there is a gator down here with a party hat on. I know that doesn't make sense, but uh, let me show you this picture. I don't know what he's doing. Now, of course, I forgot my binoculars today because I am an unprepared birder, but it looks like right up ahead there is some raptor that is circling, but it looks like it might be the right shape and size to either be a snail kite, which is what we're looking for, or a red shouldered hawk. So in a second here, I'm going to pick up my rig and head over and see if it is the bird we are searching for. In this tree behind me, there is an endangered raptor that you've probably never heard of. This is the snail kite. Now, snail kites are not only endangered, they are extremely unique raptors. They're pretty small compared to other birds of prey. They rarely weigh more than a pound, and at adult size, their wingspan is not usually more than like three and a half or four feet. But as you may have guessed from the name, our snail kites actually specialize in eating snails, specifically the Florida apple snail. Everything about our snail kite is designed to eat those Florida apple snails. You can already see that the beak of a snail kite is pretty distinctly different than that of other raptors. It is much more curved at the end, and it is so thin that it almost looks fragile. Now it is still deadly sharp, but that unique beak shape is designed to scoop out snails from their shells. So the way a snail kite hunts is they will hover above the surface of the water like a kite, 
and once they spot a snail that they might want to snack on, they will swoop down, they will snatch it with their talons, and then they will use that highly curved beak to scoop the snail out of its shell. Now, the reason that our snail kites are endangered now and actually almost went extinct in the early 1970s is twofold. For one thing, we have historically been draining and filling in wetlands to make room for human development, which is directly removing potential snail kite habitat. And for another thing, it's banned now, but DDT pesticides were a huge problem for our snail kites when they were still being used. Unfortunately, as Florida's population has rapidly grown in the past few decades, we've actually seen a sharp decline in snail kite populations from a high point in the late 90s. There is nothing else quite like our snail kites out here in Florida's freshwater ecosystems, and so they are an incredibly valuable part of the food chain here. There are very few other animals that specialize in eating apple snails, and most of the other ones that do are also birds, which rely on these freshwater habitats. So if we want to ensure a bright future for our snail kites, it's up to you and me to fight for freshwater conservation here in the Sunshine State and make sure we are protecting these amazing freshwater wetlands that the snail kite and a host of other species depend on for their life. Thank you so much for joining me on today's birding adventure. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.